Yes, guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show, the show that predominantly talks about Spurs, funnily enough. I hope you're all happy and healthy doing the things you love. It's Sunday night, but you're probably going to be seeing this Monday morning, early doors, which will leave me enough time to get another video out later on in the afternoon. Please make sure you're smashing the like button if you enjoy the video. Hit the subscribe button. Excuse me, I've got an itchy nose. If you haven't already, 20,000 is just around the corner. It's very exciting. Need a little help to get there from those that haven't subscribed. So make sure you're hitting that button. It's free to do. Hit the notification bell as well and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's, this evening's transfer news, views and clues. There's two stories I want to get to. One of them is about a defender that we've spoken about before, but there's another one. It's a really interesting story, although it comes from very much a suspicious source in the sun. But the name is too big. The juice is too tasty for me to not mention it and bring it up. And I do want to get your thoughts on it. But before we get there, I just want to spend a couple of seconds talking about uh, what was said in the preamble to the Manchester City or the Manchester Derby. Pep Guardiola was asked by the media in the build-up to the game whether or not Tottenham were in contention for the title. And he said, I'm going to get up for you so you can see it. Look at Spurs now, how good they are playing one game a week. They have to be fresh all of the season. They are out of the Carabao Cup. So Spurs will be there for sure, definitely. With the quality they have, always they had the quality. And now with the manager they have right now. Look, I don't know what his intentions are. I'm sure it's uh, 5D chess from Pep Guardiola trying to add a additional press, uh, pressure. Maybe it's being sincere. I think it's far too early for all of that stuff. But... You know, they could also read into it as a little sly dig, maybe, at Antonio Conte, the way he's saying we've always had the quality, but now with the manager we have now, I don't know, Manchester City away is coming up in, I think, three weeks' time, three and a half weeks' time. So maybe he's just trying to start the kind of conversation that it's the clash of the title challenges or one of them. I don't want to get too much into it, but just thought I'd, you know, raise it with you that whenever Ange is asked about whether or not we have title contentions, he says, you know, let the fans dream, but let's not really talk about that stuff yet. One game at a time. But when Pep Guardiola is asked, he's absolutely throwing the pressure in our direction. It's all good with me either way. Doesn't change the way I feel. But we are going to need additional resources if we are in any way, shape or form going to compete in January, February, March, in the kind of business end of the season, then at the very first and next opportunity, Tottenham are going to need to bring in some reinforcements. We know we're probably going to need a centre-back. There's you know, ideas out there now that we might need a left-back, given Ben Davies' performance you know, just was a little bit kind of um, exposed, I think, his lack of pace and how teams will target down that side if he is in and if Destiny Udoggi's out for too long. Personally, the I'd love to see Tottenham sign Fulham left back Anthony Robinson I think he is a brilliant player not going to cost the world 26 years old uh got the Premier League experience got the pace got the ability to get forward and he can get back and defend very well it shouldn't be something that we should think is out of reach if we wanted to go down that path although I don't think that's the priority or at least it's not at the top of the list a centre-back certainly is and we're going to talk about um Tosin Adarabayo there's a, an article out about him I'm going to bring to your attention. But we're also obviously looking for forwards. We're looking for maybe uh, a wing forward on the left-hand side to replace Richarlison. We're also sp speaking very often on this channel about the likes of Santiago Jimenez or Serhu Garassi. Lots of links from Tottenham to those sorts of players. We did speak on the last video about the kind of complexity of what do you do with Sonny if you go and spend big on a striker? Do you shoehorn him back into the left wing spot? Does that create unnecessary disruption to what is you know essentially working right now? But in any event, all of that stuff is out of the way. This story is coming out of the blue. I, I never in a million years thought that Tottenham would be linked with a player like this. 33-year-old, um, so it's probably unusual. And I'm going to say it right now. It's coming from the sun. So, as I say, it's not the sincerest or most reliable of sources. However... They've, they've done like three or four different versions of this story online today. And Tottenham are not the only club linked. We'll get, we're going to get into it. But it's for 33-year-old Real Madrid, absolute legend. Possibly, in my opinion, the world's greatest passer of the ball. Certainly playing today. And he's in the conversation for one of the greatest passers of all time. 
33 years old. I'm going to get to the story. Um, obviously, it would require something like Pierre and Wahoybier to, to move on and, and, and go in a different direction. And if there was then a need for us to go and bring in a midfielder, this is the story. And I thought it was too good not to talk about. So um, Tony Cruz is sounding out the possibility of finishing his career in England if he fails to nail down a new deal at Real Madrid. The German midfielder is out of contract next summer and has always fancied a crack at the Premier League. If there are no talks with the La Liga Giants by Christmas, he could be available as early as the January window. Cruz, 33, wants to continue playing in the Champions League and his representatives will sound out Arsenal, Chelsea, Tottenham and both Manchester clubs. He previously worked with Pep Guardiola at Bayern Munich and Champions City lost an experienced head when Ilki Gundogan left last summer. Spurs is a likelier destination, with sources claiming Real would only seek a nominal fee for a player who has been at the Bernabeu since 2014. Since his arrival at the club, Cruz has helped them to win the Champions League four times among 19 major trophies. The midfielder has made 430 appearances for the club, scoring 28 goals and assisting 92 more in all competitions. Should Cruz join Tottenham, he would be a different signing to what the club has made since the arrival of Ange Postacoglu. In the summer transfer window, the club focused on younger players such as Brennan Johnson and Mickey van der Ven. James Madison was the most experienced outfielder brought into the club. The new philosophy has worked. Wonders at Spurs so far this season as they currently sit top of the Premier League table. After Spurs beat Crystal Palace on Friday, Postacoglu has now collected 26 points from his first 10 Prem games. That record is better than anybody else, including the likes of Jose and Arsene Wenger. Should Cruz join the club in January, then he could offer vital experience to help the club maintain their challenge at the top of the table. Look, it's a fascinating story. Obviously, we've got to take it with the relative and the relevant salt pinching that is required when the Sun uh, do bring out these sorts of stories. And for what it's worth, when you type in, I'll show you, when you type in Tony Cruz into Google right now, you can see a lot of different teams that are being linked with him. Manchester United now invited to, to move for Real Madrid star. Real Madrid's Cruz to join the Premier League from ESPN 19 minutes ago. Newcastle consider shock move for iconic Real Madrid star. Tottenham, according to Sports Mole, lead the Tony Cruz race as midfielder eyes the Premier League move. Listen, I don't know uh, the, obviously the situation. I don't know the, the credibility of it. What I would say, as I said to you before, guys, this guy is the, in my opinion, the greatest passer of all time. And in the last 365 days, uh, his stats do not in any way, shape or form disappoint. Let me just, uh, this is for a 33-year-old playing for Real Madrid. Let's just have a look at his standard stats. Obviously, he does chip in, in the, compared to other midfielders with the odd goal here and there. Certainly, his insists are up, up there in you know, the top sort of 12 percentile. Where I think you have to really um, sort, of zoom it, sort of zone in, though, is shot creating actions. Uh, I'm trying to find it on here. Where is it? Uh, shots from free kick. No, that's not it. I'll come to it in a minute. Then we'll come back to that one. But part, look at their passing. There is not a better. He's the, the number one passer in all of the top leagues in terms of passes completed per 90 minutes, passes attempted, his pass completion. Okay, there might be someone a little bit higher, but not at the same frequency of passes. Total passing distance, nobody's more. Progressive passing distance, nobody has more. He's in the top for shorts, for mediums, and for long passes, all of which are completed. Obviously, the long passes are down a little bit. That's obviously where he gets his knockdown. But you just don't find a better pass for the ball. He's not blessed with pace. He isn't the fastest guy, but his positional sense is sensational. He knows where to be when he needs to be there. And his, as I say, his, his ability to move the ball at an incredible pace makes up all of the difference. And if you think about the relevance for a team like Tottenham, when we played against, you know, the vast majority of the teams that we played against this season that have been low blocking us, it's been a frustration for Tottenham in the first half. If we don't get that early goal, uh, we have to kind of wait and, and really push and push and push. And eventually we figured out a way to get it done. But it would be so much easier to get an early goal in those games. Let, let us sort of feel more comfortable. And then hopefully once you get the first, obviously the natural thing is the other teams have to come out more opening up the space and allow you to take advantage. Having someone who can spray the ball around the pitch with incredible accuracy and incredible pace is sometimes the difference between opening up that, that door 
uh, into a low block or not. You know, sometimes teams can huff and puff, but they can't blow down the brick wall without someone who can get the ball where it needs to be faster than than running with it. And someone like Tony Cruz is the guy. He also uses an incredible different style of play. He switches, crosses, um, you know, the long balls, the short balls, everything about him. He's a set-piece specialist as well. And this is the thing. When you look at for Real Madrid, he's in the, 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 top, the top five percentile across European top five leagues at shot-creating actions. So he's not necessarily always the guy who's on the end of it, but he is the guy that is doing things that leads to a shot in the end and that leads to a goal in the end. And that, to me, kind of gives the credibility. Not that I think that I need to sit here and justify the move. Whether or not he'd want to come to Tottenham, the article says he wants to be playing Champions League football. Well, hopefully Tottenham will be playing Champions League football next year. Obviously, there's a lot of other clubs that would be able to kind of put their name in the hat for him. And I don't know whether or not he would expect extraordinarily high wages if Real Madrid didn't offer him that final contract. Um, there may be, he might be priced out of the market. But according to the Sun and according to some of the people that have aggregated off of that ESPN as well, um, they're saying that, you know, from other sources than just where the Sun are getting theirs, that, that Tottenham are leading the race. And for me, guys, I think it would be a an absolutely phenomenal um, signing. And I think the, the justification, not only with his on-the-field stuff, but that leadership quality, if we are going to go into the Champions League um, next year and try and compete on more fronts, you're going to need someone in and around the team, especially in the midfield that has been there and done it and can offer that that kind of that quality. I think if you look at teams like Chelsea right now, amazing amounts of talent and youth based talent, youth centric talent on their side, much like Tottenham, but very few players that, you know, are a little bit steady heads and that can kind of can grab the game by the kind of scruff of the neck when necessary, reinforce the message and the narrative on the pitch. And at the same time in the background, in the dressing room, be calming people down as we go on this journey together, where we've got a lot of young players that haven't necessarily had exposure to the biggest tests and the biggest environments, the biggest arenas just yet. So, for me, I think it would be a, a phenomenal bit of business if it happened. I think it would be absolutely out of this world. I would absolutely love to see it. Do I think it's likely to happen? No, I don't. But a man can dream. I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you give it any credibility at all? Tell me on the scale. Are we going, it's at least credible? Or is it just that are the sun just doing unbelievably shameless clickbait stuff? And uh, am I just as bad for putting it out there? I am going to put a thumbnail saying clickbait warning. So uh, just so I'm, I'm kind of removed from the guilt process of showing it. Um, listen, a, a story that's far more uh, plausible is also something we're going to talk about just to kind of give you a, the last little tidbit. And this is from uh, the, well, it's a team talk aggregated story, but it's coming from elsewhere. Uh, and it says a full of uh, Tottenham are gifted a second chance to raid London rival with the star man set to leave in January. A Fulham star Tottenham attempted to sign in the summer is set to leave the cottages in January and manager Marco Silva is set to be given funds to make two statement signings per reports. Spurs were in the market for several additions in the centre-back position in the off-season. Mickey van der Ven was successfully lured from Wolfsburg to the tune of 43 million, including add-ons. However, with the fellow new signing Ashley Phillips viewed as a long-term project, an established second signing at the heart of defence eluded Ange Postacoglu. The transfer miss hasn't affected Spurs thus far, with Romero and van der Ven quickly forming a fine pairing. However, with Davinson Sanchez sold to Galatasaray, reliable depth is in worryingly short supply. Eric Dyer remained, though doesn't appear to be fancied by Postacoglu. As such, Tottenham have been tipped to go back in for a player they attempted to sign in the summer. Tosin Adarabayo, the 26-year-old, was Fulham's standout centre-half last term, though angled for a move away in the off-field in the off-season. Spurs and French side Monaco both showed interest, though a move did not come to pass. Tosin is currently sidelined while recovering from groin surgery. However, according to Football Insider, he's in line to be sold in the winter window when fully recovered. Football Insider states Tosin is set to leave Craven Cottage in January and Fulham fully expect to receive significant bids. Tosin is out of contract at the season's end and as such, the January window represents Fulham's final chance to secure a fee. The Evening Standard recently suggested Tosin could sign a new contract with Fulham, though FI don't share that view. Instead, an exit is reportedly expected and Tottenham will have a second shot at signing a Premier League proven option to reinforce their defensive line. How much toasting might cost wasn't speculated at in the piece, but given the player's contract is running down, Fulham's bargaining power is severely weakened. Guys, what I would say 
about Tosin Adebayo, that he does fit all of the kind of the criteria that I'm looking for, a player that has the pace, has the talent. He's not of the same level as Mickey van der Ven or um, as Christian Romero, but the, it would reduce the, the, the drop-off. Um, he can get back, and he, I think he could also play, generally speaking, I think he could, he could cover in both positions. There is one other player, guys. Obviously, we're talking about, a lot about um, Lloyd uh, Kelly from Bournemouth. But there's a player for me that's really standing out right now in the in the Premier League, a 21-year-old who comes from Carlisle originally. And I think he was bought about three years ago um, by Everton for about a million pounds. He's been loaned out. He went out to PSV last year on loan, which really helped him. He's come back in, and I think he's absolutely um, shone in an otherwise kind of fragile Everton team that, for what it's worth, are starting to turn the corner now, starting to get a couple of good results and break away from the relegation pack. But I'd be interested with Everton's financial issues, whether or not Tottenham may turn their attention to this guy and to and to see if, uh, to test the result. Because I think there's a real talent in there, a player that's good on the ball, very, very strong and powerful, certainly no slouch. He's got really long legs, can get, can get up and down the pitch, offers some threat going forward. Almost plays like a midfielder as well, tough tackling at times. And that is Jared Branthwaite, who, as I say, 21-year-old uh, from Everton. I don't know. I mean, according to Transfer Market, Branthwaite is valued at 18 million euros, but uh, I'm sure it would cost a little bit more. He can play on the left or the right-hand side. He, he he plays both sides for Everton. He's a left-footed, but you could, he's just like left foot is his dominant foot, which I think is obviously very beneficial. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, he's... Um, ambipedal and uh can and can and can cover both sides i don't know if buying that 21 year old who wants to continue his career wants to kick on now having had the success at psv would be less desirable for him knowing that he's got to come in and compete with mickey van der ven but of course you know, there is that argument now that if you were to bring someone like him in you could still make him kind of fight for his place or rotate but in a world where uh, toast uh, where destiny udoggy got injured, having seen the impact of the lack of pace that Ben Davies had, spe specifically against Crystal Palace on Friday night, then I feel like, you know, you could put Mickey van der Ben out on the left-back situation if you need, if needs must, and you could move Branthwaite in on the left-sided centre-back spot. I don't know if there's any if there's any ability to sign him. I think he just signed a new, a relatively, um, a, a new contract relatively recently for, uh, for Everton. But as I say, they're under kind of some financial constraints. They might be having their points docked because of uh, breaching FFP. They might be losing 10 points, which would put them you know, right at the bottom of the, of the Premier League table. And so maybe financial um, support from a, from a cheeky bid for their up-and-coming style sort of left-sided centre-back would be the best way to go about it. The only negative on that side of the story, of course, though, is, as I mentioned before, do you really want to be bringing in more and more young players when you've got two or three um, players emerging or about to join the club in Boscovic? I don't know if there's going to be a bottleneck on the kind of on the growth of of the youth team's access. You do need that doorway through to the first team, and so maybe you know it's better right now for to go for someone a little bit older, a little bit more mature, a little bit more experienced, not going to cost the world, and maybe Tosin Adrabio or Lloyd Kelly fit that model a little bit better because they are running out of contract and it's not going to cost the world. As I've said before, when we've done the financial analysis, when, when Tottenham are spending 100, 120 million pound a year, which is about 25 to 28% of our revenues, and you know that we're already on a 50% salary to turnover ratio, then when you add those things together, you're pushing into the kind of limits of FFP. So I don't expect Tottenham to spend fortunes in the transfer window whilst we are in a position where we can't seem to recover any real funds from the player trading that we're doing with the people on the books that just aren't desirable to Tottenham Hotspur anymore. That will hopefully change in a couple of years' time when we start to find some of these players that are good enough to be sold but not good enough for Tottenham that are coming through the ranks. And hopefully maybe in the future we can also liquidate and get some money back in for players that are still in, in and around the first team squad, but just not not part of the pro the, uh, the kind of puzzle or the project as we go forward. I don't know. But for me, Tosin Adarabayo, I would rather him than Lloyd Kelly. Let me know your thoughts. What are your thoughts on Branthwaite from Everton? Do you think that there's any 
do you have do you share that share the same admiration for him as as you have as i do um and most importantly guys let me know about tony cruz is he is it dream world or is he do you want him maybe you think he's too old now we, we don't want that kind of criteria is daniel levy going to be interested in bringing in on big money a player who is, is going to have very little um sell sort of sell on value and uh, is it just one that's just not something that Daniel Levy's going to do? Listen, it was too good a story to not tell you about it. So that's why I'm doing it. Uh, like, subscribe and comment, guys. And as always, bye-bye.